In this Easy Ed video lecture, we are going to learn strings, its declaration and initialization, followed by reading and writing of strings, and also manipulation of strings, which can be done without using built-in functions or using built-in functions. Let's start with introduction to strings first. A string is a collection of characters and is treated as a single data item. In C, strings are represented by characters written within the double quotation marks. In order to print this statement on the screen using a C program, we will have to write it in this way, and it produces this output. As we can see, the double quotation marks are not there in the output. We can include the double quotation marks in the output by adding a backslash character. So in the program, it is written in this way, which produces this corresponding output. Strings in C are represented by arrays of characters. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Now let's learn declaration of string. Strings are not supported in C as a data type, but it can be still represented in the form of an array of characters. It is declared in this way. Your size represents the number of characters in the string. Have a look at the examples. When a compiler assigns a string to the character array, it automatically assigns a null character at the end of the string. Therefore, the size of the array is the number of characters plus one for null character. Character arrays are initialized in the same way as numeric arrays by either listing the individual elements or by initializing the array by assigning it a string directly. When we initialize the string by explicitly listing its characters, we are needed to specify a null terminator at its end. C also allows us to initialize an array without mentioning its size, where its size is determined automatically based on the number of elements listed. We can also initialize a character array with size larger than the number of characters in the initializers. Here the computer will create an array of size 10 and allocate the string to it. It will terminate the string with a null character and assign null characters to rest of the elements of the array. While if we declare a string with size lesser than the number of elements, then it is an illegal declaration. Note that we cannot separate initialization from declaration. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Now we will learn the reading of the strings. We can use scanf statement to read a string from the terminal. It uses percent %s format specifier. No ampersand sign is needed before the variable. If we give this line as input, then the scanf statement would read only till jersey as it terminates the reading process on encountering the first white space and terminate the array by adding a null character at the end. If we wish to read the entire line, then we have to read it in two different ways. Now we write a program to illustrate the use of scanf statement to read strings. The program is started by declaring the main function followed by the four variables. Each variable here stores the location name. When the user gives this as input, then the compiler will scan each word separately and store it in different variables as scanf does not ignore white spaces. While if the user enters this as input, then Mumbai Pune and Bhopal Ranchi are stored in just two separate variables. We can also specify the field width in the scanf statement using this specifier. Here two things should be considered. If the width w is greater than or equal to the number of characters typed in, then the entire string will be stored in the variable. However, if w is less than the number of characters typed in, then the remaining characters are truncated and the string is terminated. As we know that a scanf statement can read a string without white spaces, so it can be used to only read a word at a time. However, using this format specification, we can scan in a string having number of words. This will make the compiler read till a new line character entered by the user. We know that we can read a single character as input using getCar function. Similarly, we can use the getCar function to read an entire line of text having more than one word by repeatedly reading each character and storing it in the character array. Let's write a program to read a string using the getCar function. 
The program starts by main function declaration followed by the variable declaration. The do while loop here is used to scan in the string. This is done by reading each character using the getCar function and then this character is placed in the array and the counter count is incremented. This loop will continue till the entered character is not a new line character after which it will stop looping. The last character of the array is set to null character and the program ends by writing the get ch function. We can also read a line of text using a built-in function called get s which comes under stdio.h header file. The syntax is the function name with one parameter. Here str is a string variable. This function reads a string from the terminal until a new line character is encountered and automatically assigns a null character at the end. C does not allow operations on strings directly. Operations can be performed in the string on character by character basis. Let's write a program to copy one string to another and count the number of characters entered. The program starts by declaring the main function followed by the variables. The main logic here uses for a loop to copy the string 2 to string 1 character by character. Finally we terminate the string with a null character and print both the strings. The count of the number of characters is kept using the counter variable i. Seriously. Pay attention. This is important. Now let's learn to write strings to screen. We can print a string on the screen using the printf function with percent %s specification where surname is a string. We can also specify the precision with which the array can be displayed. This specification means that we have to display 7 characters out of the column width of 15. If we include a percent minus 15.7 will display the text in left justified form while zero in the specification leads to padding of zeros in the output. Like the getCar function, putCar is also used to output various characters values. The general form is, we can use this function repeatedly to print a number of characters on the screen. Another way of printing strings is using the puts function which takes a string as a parameter and displays it in the output. This function puts the string on the screen and moves the cursor at the beginning of the next line. Now let's learn the way to perform arithmetic operations on characters. C allows us to manipulate characters in the same way as we manipulate integers. When a character constant is used in an expression, it is automatically converted into an integer value. We can know the integer value of a character by representing it as an integer. This will display 98 in the screen. We can also perform arithmetic operation on the character constants and variables. In ASCII, the value of y is 121 and so after evaluation, x is assigned 120 as the result. We may use character constants in rational expressions. For example, the statement below will test whether the characters are in lower case or no. We can convert a character digit to equivalent integer value using this relationship. If character contains a digit 5, then ASCII value of 5 is 53 and that of 0 is 48, so the result is 5. C library supports a function to convert a string of digits into its integer value. The function is, thus the string 1223 is converted into integer value. Write a program that prints A to Z and A to Z in decimal and character form. We start the program by declaring the main function followed by the variable ch. We use a for loop here which is initialized to 65 which is the ASCII value of a capital A and the test condition is used to limit the characters to small z whose ASCII value is 122. If the character is a special character, then it is ignored, otherwise it's printed with its decimal value. The output for this program is as shown. Now we will learn combining of two strings. We cannot combine two strings together by simple arithmetic addition. In C, this process is termed as concatenation. The characters of string 2 and string 1 are copied one after the other to string 3. Write a program to concatenate two strings together. 
we start by declaring the main function followed by the variables and characters array, after which we scan in the two strings to be combined, then display them before combining using the put functions. While loop is used to set the counter till the last element of string 1. Again, another while loop is used to copy string 2 to the end of string 1, character by character. Lastly, the strings are displayed. Now let us learn the comparison of two strings. C does not permit comparison of two strings directly. So these statements are not allowed. This is done by comparing the strings character by character until there is a mismatch or the string is terminated with a null character whichever comes first. Moving on to built-in functions. C supports a large number of strings handling functions that can be used to carry out many string manipulations. STRCAT is used to join two strings together. This is the general form. Here string 1 and string 2 are character arrays. When this function is executed, it removes the null character at the end of the string 1 and places string 2 in its place. And string 2 is appended to string 1. This is also a valid statement. C also permits nesting of STRCAT functions. Next built-in function is the strcmp. It compares two strings identified in the arguments and has a value 0 if they are equal. If they are not equal, then the function takes the value as the difference between the first non-matching characters in the strings. It takes the form. Your string 1 and string 2 can be constants or string variables. It helps us to determine whether the strings are equal. If not, then which one is alphabetically above? This function returns minus 9, which is as the difference between the ASCII values of i and ASCII value of r is minus 9. As the result is negative, therefore string 1 is alphabetically above string 2. Moving on to the next function, strcpy. It works like the assignment operator. It copies the content of string 2 to string 1. Next function is strlen. It counts and returns the number of characters in a string. This is the general form. Here n is an integer variable which is stored the value of the length of the string. Write a program to compare two strings using the strcmp function. We start by including the library file string.h. After that we declare the main function followed by the variables. Then we ask the user to enter the first string which is scanned using get s function. Similarly, we ask the user to enter the second string which is again scanned using get s function. The if condition compares two strings and checks whether they are equal or not. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Lastly, let's learn miscellaneous string functions. The header file string.h has many string manipulation functions. In addition, strcpy, strncpy copies only the first leftmost n characters of the source string to another target string. The general form. Your n specifies a number of characters to be copied. This statement copies the first five characters from s2 to s1. str and cmp function is same as strcmp but with little variation. It has three parameters. It only compares the leftmost n characters of S1 to S2 and returns 0 if they are equal, negative number if S1 substring is less than S2, positive otherwise. STR and CAT is also a concatenation function which takes three parameters. This will concatenate leftmost n characters of S2 with S1. Here in this example, seven characters from the string programming are concatenated with string 1, that is C. str str function is used to locate a substring in a string. It is a two-parameter function. This function searches S1 for string S2. It returns the pointer to the string. If string is found else, it returns a null pointer. Here in this program, the string house is searched in the string S1. On using the str str function, the following output is obtained. 
Next, we learn the function strchr, which is used to find the occurrence of a character in the function. It, this is the general form. For example, consider the string programming. Using function strchr, we locate the first occurrence of g in the string s1. The output of this statement would be, there is a function strchr which locates the last occurrence of the character in the string. Its general form is, consider this example using strrchr will locate the last occurrence of g in s1. Its output will be, lastly let's learn table of characters. We are often needed to list character strings such as names of students, employee names, etc. This is accomplished in C using table of strings implemented using a two-dimensional character array. This will create a table of five memory locations, each having a length of ten locations. It can also be written in this form. Let's revise what we've learned in this lecture. We started with introduction of string. A string is a collection of characters and is treated as a single data item. Then we learned the declaration of string and also initialization of string which is done in various ways. After which we learned the reading of strings which is done using the scanf statement but it has a drawback that it terminates reading on encountering the first white space. So to overcome this shortcoming, this specification is used which allows reading till a new line character is entered. Reading can also be done using getCar function and getS function. Similarly, writing of string is accomplished using printf function and also putCar as well as putS function. Next, we learn that we can perform various arithmetic operations on string by performing them individual characters. The operations are concatenation of strings, comparison of strings. Also, there are various built-in string handling functions in C. Then there are miscellaneous string handling functions which provide additional functionality. Lastly, table of strings, which is a two-dimensional character array used to represent list of names.